Thank you, guys. <clears throat> well, Dr. Ball, I present you with a copy of the fully fleshed out Moabite stone. And it will be here on exhibit, I guess, from this day forward or until uh, the Lord comes back. After the presentation, you'll be able to come up and get some real good photographs. Hopefully, guys, we can leave this light up here on it. <clears throat> and uh, that... Uh, We'll give you some good imagery of that. If you get a good photograph, you can actually read the text. And I'll give you a, a cheat sheet that you can decipher that for yourselves. And it tells you what, how each letter sounds. So you can sound it out, if you know what I mean. It's, it's kind of like uh, me and my Spanish. <clears throat> I know some of you in here speak real good Spanish. I can order a taco. I can say, donde esta el baño? Uh, I can say a few things like uh, como esta, bien, bien, uh, y tu, and things like that. I have some uh, uh, Hispanic workers that help us uh, lay, laying rock and so on. Um, but uh, the character set in the Spanish language is exactly the same as the character set I grew up with, right? So that's a big head start in learning Spanish compared to an Arabic person trying to learn Spanish. Think about that. So. Once you learn the ancient Hebrew character set, you can jump into the Moabite pretty easily, but you don't know what the words mean. You know what I'm saying? I can come into Spanish and I can pronounce it, but I don't know what that means. You know, Hecho in Mexico, I don't know. I mean, probably made in Mexico. I can, you know, a few things, yes, a, a lot of things, not so much. Well, anyway, there you have it. That's the, uh, the fleshed out version. And uh, uh, you can see we've radius the side of it, and it was several. Uh, cubic feet of, of material. Daiban, we'll talk about that again. Misha was the king who made this stone. He was a Daibonite. That means a citizen of the, the uh, town of Daibon. Here is the alphabet, basically, uh, plural. And uh, we have uh, early, middle, and late Hebrew over here on this side. And we'll just focus on Hebrew now, because if you got Hebrew down, it's 95% of the Moabitian language. And I, I can uh, relate to these better because I know these characters. Look at the uh, first character. What's it look like? No, it's hook em horns, <laughs> right? Uh, actually, it's a hook em horns, it's a UT ox head. It is an ox head. <clears throat> and Aleph, by the way, means head or head of, okay? And that dripped over into our alphabet as well. The Aleph or the A we have in the English language means, means most powerful or head of or leader. I mean, you've heard of an alpha dog? You know where that came from now. It drips out of the Hebrew. Heard of an alpha male, an A-type personality? All those things drip back or come back into the, uh, uh, the Hebrew language. Dor in the middle um, and ancient Hebrew are shaped like a triangle. It's like a, a, a triangle shaped top in an, in an old door, okay? So the door, I am, what, is, what did uh, Jesus say? I am the, the way, the light, the truth, I am the door. Right? Mm -hmm. And the, um, um, the, the meaning here is David, we'll show you that in a second on the stone, has two dollars in it. One high and one, um, uh, one actually on the symbol, two dollars as well. Uh, you're not here, you, you, you thought about what I should have been saying. <laughs> Think about it. The star of David is two dollars. It's a dollar over a dollar, and that's because his name is Dalit Yo Dalit. Real easy to find on text once you know what a triangle looks like. You look on here and you look for a triangle, and they just kind of jump out. They're like uh, they're like bullets. There's one right there. Uh, there's one down here. Line 31 has two or three of them in it, and, and so on. Well, anyway, you look at all these characters. The Lamed uh, looks like an L, shepherd's crook. Our Lamed is an L. The Tav looks like a T. Look at our Tav, looks like a T. 
I think, this is just me, I think the first language was Hebrew. There have been many arguments among scholars what the oldest language was. Most of them will tell you they think it was Sanskrit. A lot of them will say it was Chinese. Think about it. What language would they have been speaking on the ark? This is like three or four generations in front of, yeah. We're just getting ahead of Abraham here. Look at who his fathers were. At the time of the Tower of Babel, remember the scripture says they were all speaking one language. I'm guessing that language was, was the language that plowed up on land in that big boat that's modeled upstairs here above us. I think they were speaking one language on the ark. If you're in a boat with somebody for a year, there's no room for two languages. <laughs> I mean, if you are multilingual, you want to get out of that mode quick because you're always having to shift gears. So if the language on the ark was probably ancient Hebrew, I'm guessing at the Tower of Babel, the language started out ancient Hebrew and the changing of language was a punitive measure, right? So the holiest people there were the ones that floated up on the boat their language probably wasn't changed. So I'm guessing it floated all the way through. I think Hebrew was the oldest language because I see, I see hints of this language not only in our character set, but I speak a little Korean. <laughs> right, um, hard to believe. I worked in Seoul seven years. And those character sets actually have characteristics you'll see now and then that bleed over into the Hebrew. Anyway, uh, enough of that.